ever wondered why frogs have such large protruding eyes? Well, it's not just for good looks, you know. This unique feature allows frogs to see in almost all directions, even without the ability to turn their heads as we do. Let's find out more about the fascinating anatomy of these amphibians. The head of a frog is triangular and dorsoventrally flattened. The mouth is slightly ventral anteriorly and extends up to the posterior ends of the jaws. On the snout, there are two small apertures called the external nares. A mid-dorsal line extends from between the nares and the eyes down to the cloacal aperture. It divides the body longitudinally into two equal lateral halves. The region of the head in front of the external nares is called the rostrum or the snout. Behind the nares or on either side of the mid-dorsal line, there are two large and protruding eyes. There being no neck, the head cannot be turned towards the lateral sides, but the protruding eyes help the frog see around. Each eye has an upper and lower eyelid, both of which are immovable. However, towards the inner side of the lower eyelid, there is a transparent flap of skin called the nictitating membrane. It is a protective, semi-transparent membrane which covers the eye. Located at the top of the head, between the eyes, is a remnant of a median light-sensitive eye called the brown spot. Behind each eye, there is a circular part of dark stretched skin, the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. The external ears are absent in a frog. Can you tell me a unique property of a frog? They have a skeleton that is highly modified for jumping. In particular, their elongated hind limbs allow them to jump long distances. Some species of frogs are able to jump over 20 times their body length in a single leap. This ability to jump is an important aspect of their anatomy and behavior, and it is one of the features that set them apart from other animals. Let's see more external anatomical features in detail. The common Indian frog, Rana tigrina, has a body divided into the head and the trunk. The dorsal surface is olive green in color, while the ventral surface is pale yellow. The body has bilateral symmetry. The trunk possesses a pair of forelimbs and a pair of hind limbs. Each forelimb consists of an upper arm that is brachium. A forearm that is antibrachium and a distal hand or manus. Manus consists of a wrist that is a carpus, a palm that is a metacarpus, and four fingers. The fingers are separated from each other and are devoid of claws. The hind limbs are very long and muscular in comparison to the forelimbs. The thigh and the shank are quite long and muscular. The pes or the foot consists of an ankle called the tarsus, a sole that is metatarsus and five webbed toes devoid of claws. The ankle region in the hind limb is much longer than the wrist of the forelimb. The limbs help the frog in locomotion on land and in water. The head of a frog is triangular and flattened with a mouth that extends to the posterior ends of the jaw. The snout has two small apertures called the external nares and a mid-dorsal line that divides the body into two halves. The head has two protruding eyes with immovable eyelids and a transparent nictitating membrane for protection. The head also has a remnant of a median light-sensitive eye called the brown spot and circular eardrums behind the eyes. Frogs do not have external ears. The trunk of a frog is olive green on the dorsal surface and pale yellow on the ventral surface. The trunk has bilateral symmetry and is equipped with a pair of forelimbs and hind limbs. The forelimbs consist of an upper arm or brachium, a forearm or antibrachium, and a hand or manus. The hand has a wrist or carpus, a palm or metacarpus, and four fingers without claws. The hind limbs are longer and more muscular than the forelimbs and consist of a thigh, a shank, and a foot or pes. The foot has an ankle or tarsus a sole or metatarsus and five webbed toes without claws. The limbs of a frog aid in locomotion on land and in water. 